Hey there! Hello and welcome to the technical section of Bio Pandit. This is sort of your very own Maha Pandit. Here I am going to show you how to identify the open reading frames of a gene. This analysis has two parts. First, we have to download a nucleotide sequence, preferably a gene sequence from public databases. We are going to use Escherichia coli ribosomal protein S2 gene sequence for this purpose. The second part is to identify the open reading frames, ORFs. There are multiple standalone software tools and online servers for this analysis. We are going to show you the use of Eugene software package for this purpose. So first of all, what is an open reading frame? Simply speaking, an open reading frame is a sequence of nucleotides uninterrupted by any stop codon. It may or may not start with the start codon AUG. So basically, the sequence stretch between the start and the stop codon, that's the part of a gene that encodes a functional protein. Guys, let us dig a little deeper into the basic concept first. Central dogma is the basis of cellular life. Central dogma basically represents the interconversion of the three basic types of molecular species present in the cell, that is DNA, RNA and protein. Let us take a quick look at the interconversion. DNA can be replicated to DNA. The enzyme required is DNA polymerase. DNA can be transcribed to RNA. The enzyme needed is RNA polymerase. RNA can be reverse transcripted to DNA using reverse transcriptase enzyme. And finally, RNA can be translated to protein by ribosome. Human genome consists of nearly 3 billion nucleotide base pairs, but it imports for some 20,000 proteins only. So basically, a large fraction of our genome is not actually coding sequence. This is the reason that when you sequence some part of a genome, you must have some algorithm to identify the coding and the non-coding regions out of it. Before you start thinking that if I find the ORF, I basically identify the gene. I need to warn you that this is not the case. The basic definition of ORF is any nucleotide stretch between a start and a stop codon. This does not have to be the whole coding sequence. A start codon AUG encodes methionine. If you look at any protein sequence in Uniprot, I guarantee that you will see at least one methionine in the middle of the amino acid chain as well. So just keep in mind what all your finding algorithms actually do. They simply identify the start and the stop codons and give you the nucleotide stretch in between. So it is not necessary that an ORF has to be of the same length as the whole mature mRNA is. Enough concept. Let's calculate. First, we're going to collect some nucleotide sequence. We go to Uniprot database. We go to advanced search and select our protein name. Thirtyus ribosomal protein S2. Next, we select the organism. Escherichia coli. We hit the search button. It shows you documented S2 protein sequences for E. coli. Go to the entry page. Scroll down to the genomic annotation database. Select the gene ID that will take you to the respective NCBI gene web service. Go to this faster link and you will be redirected to the nucleotides web server. Here you can see the coding sequence of RPSB gene that encodes H2 protein. The location of this gene within the genome in terms of the base pair numbering is shown here. We are going to take 18 upstream and 18 downstream nucleotides. Update view. There you go. We have we save this sequence in a faster format file. Now we need our tool. The Eugene software package can be downloaded and installed from this website. After installing, this is the graphical user interface. Open the faster sequence file in Eugene. Click on the action window. Select Analyze and select Find ORF. Select the reference genetic code used. Please do have a prior knowledge of the organism of which sequence you are working on. Genetic codes can differ in different organisms. For our bacterial system, the standard genetic code is fine. 
you can select for both strands if you are not sure whether you have sequenced the forward or the reverse strand now click on the preview say that if you check the option that your what if must start with the initiation code on aug you get only two potential what ifs just if you double click on them the what if position will be highlighted on the nucleotide sequence one what if is of 135 nucleotide length which is going to be translated into a 45 amino acid long protein another is of 723 nucleotide length that will be translated into a 241 amino acid long protein so does any of these what ifs represent the actual protein if you look at the uniprotein triplet, the actual protein starts with a methionine and is of 241 amino acid length. So in this case, the ORF of 723 nucleotide is the actual coding region. We took 18 upstream nucleotides and see this ORF starts from position 19. So the ORF finding tool has identified the coding region. Let us now play around a bit with the options. If you uncheck the option that an ORF must start with a start codon, see what happens. Now, there are four potential ORFs. The longest ORF is now of 741 nucleotides and it starts with position 1. Remember that we took 18 upstream nucleotides. So, this new ORF includes some promoter sequence as well and it does not represent the actual coding region. Let us now see allow overlaps. This option allows identification of overlapped ORFs as well. See, now we have a lot more results. Just double click on the different identified ORFs and you can see their positions on the nucleotide sequence. See that the actual coding region that between 19 to 741 nucleotides is back. That was not shown in the previous option as it was a part of the longer ORF between 1 to 741. Select allow alternative initiation codons and now you have even more results. This time along with AUG, four other codons are considered as the start codon, which are GUG, UUG, AUU and CUG. Naturally, a lot many ORFs are predicted. The interesting thing is our original coding region is still one of the results. If you check the option include stop codon, see that your number of results remain the same, just the ORF length include three extra nucleotides, that is the three stop codon nucleotides. How to save your annotated ORFs? Go to output, new document and save it. There are different formats by which you can save your results. The simplest option is to use a BED format. This includes nothing but the location of the ORFs. The gene bank format is way more interactive. It includes the ORF location, length, and translated polypeptide length. So, this is all for now, guys. To learn more of such techniques, please keep watching the other videos of BioPandit. Please feel free to contact us in biopandit at the red gmail.com and in our Facebook page with suggestions, requests for videos and asking for technical help. If you like our videos, hit the like button and help others by sharing it. For more updates, please subscribe to our channel and like our Facebook page. Bye guys, see you soon.